Okay. So uh, this is problem 27-9. So in this problem, we have a current carrying circular uh, loop of wire. So circular loop of wire of radius r. R and carrying a current distraction of magnitude capital I, and this is partially immersed in a uniform magnetic field. So meaning that only part of this is in some magnetic field that's pointing towards us, and this is uniform. This is everywhere. But outside this region, the magnetic field is zero. And inside, the magnetic field is some value B not uniform towards us. So the question uh, is asking, uh, determine the net force on the loop due to the field in terms of theta naught. Note that theta naught points to the dash line above which, so from the circle center to this point of intersection, the angle it makes with the vertical is called theta naught. So we are required to find net force on the circular loop. Okay? Uh, so this problem can be solved in more than one way, uh, but from the way it is it is given, I think uh, they are asking for a particular solution. For, so first I'll proceed with that way and then I will introduce uh, the, other, the other way. Uh, now, so we are going to look at, uh, we are going to uh, calculate the force on this loop. So the force on that loop is not, uh, is not going to be constant because the direction of the current is changing. So what we need to do is that we are going to divide this into uh, little parts, little segments of length dl and we are going to calculate the force on each, those, each of those parts. Okay? So the force on each of those parts is going to be some Bf, <coughs> and this is going to be uh, I Bl uh, cross B. Okay? So something, something like this. Uh, now, uh, as I said, the magnetic field is constant, but uh, because the direction of the current is changing and DL is, uh, the DL vector is along the direction of current, uh, we are, we are so, sorry, the orientation of the line segment is changing. Uh, the, the, the direction of the vector dl is going to change, so we are not going to have something constant. We actually need to integrate this. So what will be the df that's acting on this little little part? Okay, let's, let's start with that one. For that, I'm going to use uh, the right-hand rule. So, and the right-hand rule says that I'm going to extend my arm in turn in direction of the uh, first vector, and then I, I'm going to orient my arm in such a way that I can curl my fingers naturally in direction of the second vector, so it's like this, and this is going to be like so if this is my DL, <coughs> direction of F is going to be in that direction. So uh, one way to determine this is that this is a cross product, so the resultant vector is going to be perpendicular to both of them, so the B is you know uh, in this direction uh, out of the uh, blackboard, so the resultant vector must be in plane. It is perpendicular to B, so that must be in this plane. Uh, so it is in this plane. It's also perpendicular to the line segments on top of these uh, on, on top of these circles. So it must be in the radial direction, right? If you're going perpendicular to the line segments on the circle, you must be pointing either towards the, uh, si the center or away from the center. In this case, it turns out to be. It's away from the center. Now, this argument, of course, applies all over. Right? So, for example, here it's going to be like this way, here it's going to be this way, and so on and so forth. As we go around the circle, and we are going to have some uh, some sort of symmetry. Now, you might be tempted uh, to, to to use a symmetry argument this way. So, let's uh, first introduce some coordinate system. Okay? You might be tempted to say that the right is the same as the left. Uh, so that uh, any component, any force component of F is going to get cancelled, so this F, this vector F, must in fact be purely in Y direction ahead. Now, in this case this is correct, but the argument is wrong. Right? This, comp uh, this situation is not completely left-right symmetric because of the current. Okay? So the current breaks the symmetry. Note that inside the field there is some current going to the right, but uh, the, the part that's going to the left is actually outside the field. Okay, so there isn't a complete left-right symmetry. However, when you draw the force vectors, then you find that they are left-right symmetric, and indeed their horizontal components, x components, must cancel, and the force must be given by this. Now, uh, once we write it this way, we can calculate Fy as an integral of dFy, and that is going to be so dF times some angular factor. So if this is my 
a point for which I'm trying to calculate. Uh, let's draw some angle. Uh, so I'm going to just call this angle uh, theta. Okay? And uh, I'm trying to calculate the vertical component of this force. So this, if this is theta, if I uh, draw this, this angle is also theta, is that right? Yeah, so I'm going to uh, multiply this by cosine theta to calculate the vertical component. Okay? And uh, the F is the magnitude of the infinitesimal force, and uh, this, in this case, this cross product is going to just become a simple product because the L and B are perpendicular to each other, so B is perpendicular to the plane. This loop and hence all the line segments on the loop are uh, in the plane, so they're perpendicular, so this just becomes a simple product. I can just write the magnitude down. This is going to be I uh, dl b times cosine theta, and the last thing is to determine the limits of my integral. So this is going to, this theta is going to start from here and then go all the way up to here, so that corresponds to an angle of theta naught with the vertical. And then when I reach the other side, it's going to be two pi minus theta naught. Okay. Now, to take this integral, I need to make my variable, integration variable, agree uh, with, with the limits or you know, make the limits agree with the integration variable. Since I already have this theta factor, it's, I think, easier uh, to turn, turn that DL into something involving theta, and that can be easily done. So this is I times B. Uh, DL is R uh, times D theta. I, that R is also constant. I can take that out. So this is going to be... Uh, cosine theta, d theta from theta naught to two pi minus theta naught. This integral can easily be done. The primitive of cosine is sine. So this is going to be I B R sine theta, theta naught, two pi minus theta naught. Okay, uh, now what does this look like? So on the one limit, it looks like sine theta naught. The other one, is a two pi minus theta naught. So the sine function, uh, let me make some room here to demonstrate what sine function looks like. <coughs> so it looks like this, this is two pi. And let's say that if this is theta naught, this is going to be two pi minus theta naught. So sine of two pi minus theta naught is going to be negative. So this is completely symmetric with respect to this central point. So this, this uh, the uh, y coordinate of this point is going to be negative y coordinate of this point. So sine of two pi minus theta naught is going to be negative sine theta naught. So these are both uh, the same thing. So I'm going to get a factor of two sine theta naught from there. Okay. <coughs> two i b r sine theta naught. Now, there's a negative sign, but that doesn't matter. Uh, we already know what the direction is going to be. So there are these uh, components. Uh, so th these are going to be completely canceled by uh, the part over here. These are going to be completely canceled out by the part here. The only part that doesn't get canceled out is going to be this circular arc that's left over here. And the force for that is going to be just in the negative direction. Yeah? So you can say that uh, your uh, y component is going to be just some negative number. Uh, given by this magnitude. Yeah. Now, so this is somewhat the hard way, uh, but there is an easier way to solve this problem. And uh, to, to see that easy way, you need to look at uh, somewhat ahead to problem 11, okay? So there they give you a theorem. They're saying that if you have a uniform magnetic field, and if, if you have a plane, and uh, if you're looking at just two points in the plane, and those points are connected by a wire that's com completely uh, in the plane, and instead of you know, going over, that whole wire, you can just look at a straight line segment that connects those two points. Okay? So let's redraw the situation. So I have some magnetic field. Okay? And I have two points, say A and B. And these are connected by some wire that's completely in plane. Okay? So instead of calculating net force on this, I can actually calculate the force on the straight line segment that connects these two points. It's going to give the same answer. So we can do the same thing here. Okay? Instead of calculating this whole thing, that's in the magnetic 
magnetic field, what we can do is that we can shift this a little bit first of all, you know, cut, cut out this part, shift this whole thing a little bit so it's completely in the plane, and then we can look at just the straight line that connects these two points, okay? So the force, because on that uh, wire that connects these two points carrying the same current, is going to be uh, F is gonna be some I times some L times B, where L is going to be this distance, Okay, now, what is that distance? Well, it is twice this distance, and that distance is, in fact, uh, radius times uh, sine of theta naught. Okay? So this is going to be I twice the radius of sine theta naught times B, okay? which, of course, agrees with this answer over here. Okay? And, in fact, uh, if you look at uh, the current that's going, so the current is rotating this way, the, uh, when I connect these two points, it's going to be pointing that way, uh, even the direction uh, can be determined by using this recipe. Okay? So that will be the easier way to solve this problem, but from the way it is given, I suspect they actually want you to do this integral, so I, I showed you a lot of the ways. That will be all. <laughs>